More than 300 sewage and water board employees were at their posts when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans on August 29, 2005. And they stayed through the catastrophic flooding that engulfed 80% of New Orleans after the levees broke. These dedicated and heroic employees were first responders providing critical emergency sewerage and water board system restorations while in many instances fighting for their own survival and the survival of others. Their valiant efforts must not be forgotten but preserved for austerity as a testament to the courage, tenacity, and dedication of these employees in the face of overwhelming odds. It's absent. So what is your job description now? Now, water mm -hmm. purification superintendent is my job description now. So okay, and what does that mean? That means that I'm responsible for the water treatment processes here at the Carrollton water plant, also at the Algiers water plant, and the water quality lab, which is located here at the, at the Carrollton water plant. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing on August 29th? 2005. On August 29, 2005, I was the assistant to the water purification superintendent and my responsibility was at the chemical building here at the Carrollton plant, um, which is responsible for the chemical treatment part of the water purification process. So what was going on at that time? At that time, we were preparing for Hurricane Katrina. Um, we have a uh, uh, I guess you call it a, a routine that we do to prepare for any hurricane um, in which we uh, make sure we, we, we have a stockpile of, of, of chemicals on site so cause in case there's any interruption in the flow of uh, treatment chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, we fill up any, any storage reservoirs that we have on site to make sure we have a, extra water available um, if there's any interruption in the process. Um, and then our employees bring in with them about a three-day supply of food, um, water, and clothing to change. A three-day so supply. Three-day supply. So we assume that a typical hurricane storm, at minimum, will stay overnight. We might be here for a day and a half is, is a minimum stay. Um, normal, you know, we rarely, we've ne never gone over a, a day and a half, two days, with the exception of Hurricane Katrina. So this is what you were thinking, that this was going to be just one of those routines where you well, went a couple of days? I think, I think everybody was, was a little more concerned than usual because the weather reports were predicting uh, uh, one of the, you know, the most severe storm that, that we had experienced in our lifetime, at least. Um, in my case, I was born three days after Hurricane Betsy. So I didn't live through Hurricane Betsy. I heard plenty of stories about Hurricane Betsy. Um, so, so the predictions were that this was gonna be, you know, the, the most uh, extreme storm in, our, in, in my lifetime. And How it, worried were you about that? Um, a little bit more than usual, I guess. I mean, at, at the time, geez, let's see. I've been with the Sewage and Water Board for 27 years now. So that was 10 years. So seven, at the time, I had been here for 17 years. Um, 13 of those had been in what we call the operations department. So I had been through many hurricanes um, of lesser magnitude. So it was almost routine for us. You know, we, we, were, we were used to, to, to being on site during a storm and going through these uh, procedures to prepare for a storm and then afterwards to, to clean up after the storm. So uh, I think everybody was a little more uh, excited than usual because of the predictions. Um, but it wasn't in like a panic state or anything like that. I, I, w I, was, I was glad to be able to you know, get my family packed up and get them out of town the day before. So I didn't have to worry about them on my mind. I was just focused on, on, on work. And I really wasn't expecting, you know, to have to go through what we ended up enduring while we were here uh, post-Katrina. And what were you thinking or what happened when the levees broke? Well, um, when the, well, as you know, the levees didn't break. Well, they, we didn't know about the levees being broken. When you found out about it. Yeah, when we found out about it, um, the first time I found out about it, um, was um, I was in a meeting and, and we were uh, discussing, I think some of our uh, management had been out mm -hmm. in helicopters surveying the area because, mm -hmm. of, because of the levees breaking and they had come back with some, uh, some aerial photographs f 
from helicopter ride of the areas that So you got to in. see what it looked like? I got like. to see some photographs. And one of the photographs that I saw, uh, I quickly recognized was my neighborhood in Lakeview. Um, I could see the treetops and the house peaks and recognized the Pontchartrain Boulevard area. And at that point in time, I knew that I wasn't going home anytime soon. What were you feeling? Um, you know, at, I, it was almost a, a, a feeling of numbness that, you know, I, I guess maybe that you would get maybe in a state where you were in an initial state of shock where you don't really react emotionally to it. It's almost like a business like, you know, this has happened, there's nothing you can do about it. Now I'm going to, I know my family's someplace else, and I'm just going to focus on whatever needs to be done here. I know at that point I knew I wasn't going to be able to go home in the foreseeable future, and then I did. I knew my home was underwater, and mm -hmm. and that was really, I guess that was it. I just knew I, I, I was here, and I was going to do whatever I could here to to get things back to normal. How did that impact what you, your job was here? Um, knowing that my home was flooded, or or the flooding itself. The flooding itself. Flooding itself. Well, the flooding uh, itself. Um, I guess the 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 night that the storm passed. Um, well, the flooding didn't. It was more the more of the wind damage impacted um, my job because um, all the trees that that were toppled because of the wind damage pulled a lot of water lines out of the ground, which generated a, a huge demand for water because it was all leaking out into the street. Um, so um, the, was one, was that night, I can't remember what night it was. It, it, like, I'm assuming it was the night that, that, the, that the winds passed, uh, the night of Katrina passed. Um, we um, experienced in, in that facility, we monitor the flow of water into the plant and we have, of course, we have to treat that and, and uh, keep the flow of water going out of the plant. And, and then we, what we saw was a, a sudden intense increase in the demand from the system that we couldn't keep up with in the plant. We were putting, trying to get additional pumps online, um, and it was a pumping capacity concern, trying to get everything started. And at the time, we didn't know why we just saw this huge change in, 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 in the demand going out to the system and so it was a very frantic night that night and this was happening everything always seems to happen in the middle of the night we never have hurricanes <laughs> at noon or anything like that so <laughs> everybody's up you know it's three o'clock in the morning we're we're on the intercom communications talking to the river station begging for more send us more water you know we can treat it but they can't get it to us um, trying different pumps. Um, at one point, um, we were having an issue priming a pump at the river station. Um, so I sent some of our guys from my operations out there to help, to see if they could help get the pump primed. And this was in, in the middle of the storm. So it, they went out into the winds and, and did what they could to get the, the vacuum system, the vacuum priming system working. But eventually we, we, we lost um, and the demand overcame what we were able to bring into the plant. Um, and, um, and then, you know, at the time we didn't know what was going on in the power plant. We were on the other end of the plant. We were really focused on getting water into the plant and treating that water. And from what I understand, right about that same time, the power plant was, um, having flooding issues and um, and then they shut the power off and when the, they shut the power off at the power plant then our building went dark and it was like this there's not that was the end of our efforts to try to get more water into the plant because now we didn't have any electricity and so so there was this great intensity of energy of trying to trying not to lose you know you're doing everything you can you're putting every effort you can into keeping everything going and trying to keep up with the demand and all of a sudden somebody turns the lights out and and the party's over. And was, 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 there was, just, was there ever a sense of helplessness? Panic, oh, absolutely. Chaos, chaos. During that few hours of, that I'm describing, there was a, a great sense of, of, of helplessness and not anticipating that we weren't going to be able to keep the system functional. 
um, and doing, trying things that we n wouldn't normally even consider to try to, you know, not get to that point. Um, it was very frustrating and, and, and very chaotic. And um, and when they when the power went off and we didn't have power anymore, it was it was almost a sense of relief in that you know we did everything we could. Now there's nothing we can do. We don't have any power to run the pumps. Um, we don't have to fight this battle anymore right now. And and everybody just was just exhausted at that point. And, were you still listening to what was going on on the? On it the got real quiet after, after that. Really? Yeah, it got real quiet. <laughs> I think everybody. Just Did you have this sense of like, <laughs> w but what's going to happen next? That's a good question. Um, I don't, at that point, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think it was just more of a, a. a, a chance to take a break. You know, it was like mm -hmm. everybody's. Body and mind was just it, you were spent. At you were point. spent at that point, and it was just you know just go sit down somewhere, and now you can relax for a few minutes. What do we do next? Uh, you know, I don't know because we've never been in this situation before. But um, at that point, um, what were you wondering? I mean, after you after you had uh, realized that you lost that battle against <laughs> the storm, um, when you had time to really collect your thoughts, what? What were you thinking about your situation? Hmm. I'm trying to think back. That I think at that point, um, that, I remember that that, helped, that was during the night. So mm -hmm. the next, I think at that point it was just um, get some rest, mm -hmm. and then the next morning. Um, we got out into the plant to try to find out what was what was going on in other areas of the plant, um, especially in particular the power the power plant, since that was our source of power at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and from that point forward, our uh, well, getting power was one was was one of our concerns, either from from anybody we could, from Entergy or from the sewage and water board. We needed some source of power to be able to try to restart the system again. Um, so that became really our focus was, was um, how are we going to restart the, the system and when we do restart, what, what function are we going to have? Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and that was kind of a, you know, we kind of took it one step at a time, you know. Um, so at this point you were, in, you were in the process of just trying to extrapolate and pull things together, anything you could, yes. anything you could think of to try to get this system back up and running. That's right, yes. And, and, and in our case, we were dependent on power. You know, we couldn't do anything without, without power. Um, so you were like a ship without a rudder. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. You so we were, we were in communication with the, pe with the staff in the power plant. We, we would go visit them on a regular basis um, and try to find out what was going on. And and, um, and and you'd never been in this position before? Absolutely not. In your wildest dreams, did you ever imagine that you would be? No. No. We've and been, as, after being through many hurricanes and being, you know, when our standard mode of operations for a, a storm is, is to switch to sewage and water board generated power to power this facility, um, not at the beginning of the storm, but when the winds reached a certain uh, strength and we knew that it was inevitable that energy was going to mm -hmm. cut off our power due to, to, to damage or wind damage or whatever, we would, we would make that transition to sewage and water board power and there was never any concern about power. Um, it was always very reliable and we were able to, 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 to perform the operations that we needed to. But this time was very different. This time was very different. This time, you know, um, when, the, when the power went off, um, at, at that time the, um, the, the, the streets were flooded here in the plant, not like they were in other parts of the city, but enough to where we, you know, we were wading through water trying to get around the plant. We, well, we, we were taking elevated catwalks to avoid having to, to wade through water, but there were certain areas that we, we couldn't avoid it. Um, so yeah, it was, it was very different. Um, 
and you know I don't think anybody had a plan an idea of exactly how we were going to uh, get things going again it was it was more of a everybody get together and scratch your heads and and what are you know what do we have available what are our resources um, and and how do we use that and then and then restarting the whole facility was 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 a challenge getting power was a was our first goal um but so how once, we did once we got power then we had to you know started the broad water pumping station we had to get water coming into the plant and then we had to just figure out which of our facilities we could run in the during the treatment process what was available and what wasn't and um, and it was kind of a, a a step to fact you know we'd have to start with one see if we could keep that one going and then try the next get the next one going and, and just kind of work our way through it and it and it took um, it took several tries uh, once we did get some power it took several tries before we were able to start the system and keep and keep it running. It wasn't it, wa it wasn't the first day. It took se it was several days. Of several attempts. days. Several days, and and each attempt um, to to get sewage and water board power, which required firing up the boilers, producing steam to turn one of the, the turbine generators to produce power to send to our pumps to pump water to the plant and start the whole process, each time we tried it, um, the first time didn't last very long. They think they ran out of water in the boiler before they could get <laughs> everything going. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and me and my staff were, like I said, we were on the other side of the plant. We knew what the plan was. We knew they were gonna try to fire up the boilers and, and make some power. And we were kind of on standby waiting for their power so we could jump in and start what we needed to do. Um, and so we were all in the plant, up on a on a high point in the plant, watching the power plant. We were looking for steam coming <laughs> out the top of the power plant. Cause that, Got your fingers crossed. Well, we were all we were all standing up there waiting for that steam, and then and then we we'd see some steam coming out the top. All of a sudden, the lights would come on, and everybody would just get so excited. It was like the power's back on. Everything's gonna be great now. You know, the air conditioning's on. The lights are on, uh, and that would first time lasted about 15 minutes I think and everything went back out again and it was just this this huge like sigh like, oh. no, we're back right back where we started again no so how many anything. how many times did it take you before you got the power it back on permanently three or four times I don't remember if it was three or four but it was three or four times and each time it took the better part of a day to, to try because they had to fill the boiler with water, they had to heat it up, um, and then once they got it hot, then they had to roll the turbine, and and it would take it would, it would start early in the morning, and it would take the better part of it. They'd be early afternoon or early evening before we really got to try anything, and then we, when the steam went off again, the lights went out. Uh, it was that was it for that day, you know? <laughs> we'll get something to eat and get some rest and wait till the next time. So it was, it was. And each time, the lights would stay on a little bit longer. You know, 15 minutes. So the you first were making time, progress. 30 minutes the next time. Yeah, we were making some progress, but it was each time. But each time the lights would go back off again, it was it, it was very frustrating because everybody just wanted to get everything going so bad that each little puff of steam that came out the powerhouse was just this this uh, beacon of hope that would soon evaporate when uh, when the steam went away and the lights went back off again. Um, so was that your greatest challenge during the storm or not? Um, or what would you say no, was? No, I would say... What was your greatest job? I, I would say our greatest challenge during the storm was people. Um, being here, going through the flooding, knowing that you know either their homes were flooded or, or damaged, um, communications, not being able to talk to their families was a big issue. Um, we had some people whose family were still here in town who were concerned about their safety. If they weren't flooded, they were concerned about their safety because of gunfire or looting or, or things that they, there were so many rumors going around at the time. You listened to the radio and you know, you heard stuff that sounded surreal and you didn't know if it was real or not, but if your family was here in town, it certainly you know, it made you very concerned. And so, um, 
So dealing with people and their emotions and trying to keep everybody to, you know, to keep their mind together and keep them uh, be a productive member of the workforce um, was the biggest challenge to me. Um, so was there um, a sense of trauma taking place? Absolutely, yeah. Um, more so, you know, at that, during that time, you really got to know, you know, your, your, your staff. Um, previous to that, you know, you, you'd work with them five days a week, eight hours a day. You got to see their work, their work face, you know, they came and did their job. But you really didn't get to know what they were capable of, uh, where their breaking point was. And, and, and um, it, you really learned a lot about people um, during that couple of weeks, three weeks that we were here. And, um, and so did your heart go out to some people? Absolutely. You know, and, and, and everybody was a, was a big, even people who didn't, had troubles at working together during normal times, everybody came together during that time and there was no you know, prejudices or, or predetermined opinions about people. Everybody helped anybody who needed help. If they needed, uh, if their family was, was having, they were in town and, and, and they couldn't evacuate and they needed to, to, to get to that person. If there was a way we could get them out to that site, then we would help them get out there and help their family. Um, you know, if somebody um, couldn't communicate with their family, but we had a way to get through with a third party to get to them, you know, everybody helped each other. Uh, we all shared food. We all, you know, got together and, and, and told stories. And it, it was just like a big, big family uh, during that time period. It so really you tried to keep different. everybody's morale up. Absolutely. That was, it was very difficult. Um, and it was something that we, I don't know if anybody, any of us had ever really had to go through that before and have to deal with, with those problems specifically. You know, you're always dealing with employee problems um, on an individual basis maybe, but they're usually work-related problems and not, you know, personal, personal issues. What um, was going through your, your mind and what was the atmosphere like when you found out some of your fellow employees were trapped in floodwaters at, at, at the pumping station. That was, uh, that was, that was really scary. Um, I didn't, I didn't talk to any of them personally. I heard about them. Um, and I was, um, I, I, I did get to talk to, we had some of our, um, electrical staff who was out at the pump stations as well. Um, station that day, I get to talk to to some of them. Um, they were kind of isolated. They weren't in, um, they, they weren't in danger. But the station that they were supposed to be in was flooded. But they were I think they were out in New Orleans East, so they were able to leave the station and go up on the on the levee by the lakefront and and, and get away from the floodwaters. So, um, but but at that time, they, I think they felt comfortable and safe and it wasn't um, danger. But I, I did get a call in the middle of the night. I had a, a sewage and water board radio in my office. And um, I did get a call for help in the middle of the night that was very disturbing for, for some employees who were stationed at our central yard facility in Gentilly who um, were, were flooded in the facility. They were up, I think, on the second floor of the building, so they weren't in the floodwaters themselves, but they were trapped and isolated, and they were very frightened, and um, trying to get them help was... How did that affect you? How did it affect me? Um, it was a little disturbing. Um, I wasn't sure how to get them help. That was, I guess, you know, one of my problems was, was these people needed help, and I didn't know how to help them. I couldn't personally help them. Um, and I didn't know who to contact to get them help at that time. So, so what did you end up doing? I ended up, um, I ended up sharing that information with some, with some others in our management. And uh, I honestly don't know what happened after that point. I don't know if they ended up having to stay there for a period of time or if they were able to rescue them by a boat. Uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, I didn't hear from them again. So hopefully they... They weren't there much longer. <laughs> they, they made out. 
Yeah. In the end, eventually uh, they made up. I, I assume they did. Uh, I didn't know them personally, so I mm -hmm. honestly couldn't tell you what their names were at this point in time. Yeah. How critical would you say the work of the Sewage and Water Board employees were to uh, getting the city back up and running? Oh gosh, I think it was extremely critical. Um, we had so many, I mentioned earlier, um, this huge demand. We had so many water main breaks that had to be repaired. Um, we, we had, you know, as part of my responsibilities at the time, we had to, um, we had to basically disinfect the whole city's water pipe network, and then we had to certify that it was safe to drink. Um, before people could come back into the area and, and live here, um, that was a huge effort. Uh, that went most on people, for, most for people months. don't think about that. You, so you, yeah. ha you had to desanitize the entire system. Um, we had, yeah, we had to, we had to, we had to switch our treatment process in order to be able to accomplish that. So we, we went to a, um, a different disinfection method, which was uh, much stronger. Um, and we typically would put through the system. Um, and then we had to isolate the system into pieces because it was too big of a piece to do all at once. And it was too, there was so much damage in some areas that it would have took much longer for us to try to, to get the whole system uh, disinfected and ready for, for drinking. Um, then if we broke it into smaller pieces and then brought certain pieces back online when they were ready and, and worked on the other pieces um, after that. And that's, I don't know if you recall, but we did, you know, we, there was a, the main part of the city um, that we were able to bring back first. And everything, um, New Orleans East and the Lower Ninth Ward that was on the other side of a, 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 a waterway, um, um, in the areas that were hit the worst, that had the most damage, it took us uh, much longer in, in some cases to be able to, to get those areas. Um, we had to, first of all, we had, to, um, we had to get the water pressure stabilized. We had to be able to maintain good stable pressure before we could really even begin to, to, to disinfect everything. Um, and then once we got that done, then we, we would start the disinfection process and then we'd have to go out and and, and sample um, and prove that those areas were safe before we could convince uh, the state health department that, you know, it, that we can bring people back to those areas now. So that was a, a very long and challenging process that, um, that we went through to get that done. Yeah, I remember the news conferences that the mayor would hold every day about which areas were potable, had, had uh, potable water, and which areas didn't. So that was you at work trying to get those systems not, back not up and running. Not me personally, but the water purification <laughs> staff. Your yes. department. Yes, they, they were the one. Well, we were, we were treating the water here, like I said, a little more aggressively to, to, mm -hmm. um, to be able to accomplish that goal. And then our laboratory staff um, was out in the field. Uh, collecting samples. Uh, our, sure, our maintenance team was out there fixing water leaks uh, left and right, probably all hours of the day. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was an effort of a lot of people um, to try to get to that point. And that that was pretty record time. It was. Um, well, it, that and as well as um, understand draining the city. Was, uh, was, yeah. was way ahead of schedule as well. And that had to happen before we could even begin to, to do what we needed to do. So considering what you were up against yes. and considering the amount of damage, you really did quick work. I, I believe so. I, I think, I think we, we accomplished what we set out to do much faster than anybody expected us to be able to do so. And right. that was, again, that was key to bringing people back without drinking water. And, you can't, you can't have a city occupied with, with, without safe water to drink, so. All right, last question. Yes. How would you describe the progress made post-Katrina in the rebuilding of the sewage and water board system? Unprecedented, I guess, and at least in my tenure. Um, I've seen a, a tremendous amount of, uh, of work, 
both uh, engineering design and, and you know we're going through a lot of uh, I guess rehabilitation and replacement now as a, as a result of that towards um, replacing or improving equipment to make it more reliable and um, bring it back to its its former state of, of reliability and, and functionality. Um, so it's it's been a, a tremendous effort and it's ongoing still and it, it's uh, it's it's um, it's gosh it's taken up a, a good portion of, of most of our time um, something that you know in the past we focused on on running the plant now we spend quite a bit of time involved in discussions about the design for the repairs and the replacement and then at the same time that we're trying to run the plant we're going through the the rehabilitation of the plant so we're kind of balancing keeping the plant running and 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 pr providing for the needs with repairing the equipment and 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 pr returning that redundancy and reliability that we had before so it's 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 been uh, i guess it required a lot of extra effort and a lot of brought us into a a lot of areas that norm weren't our normal job responsibilities um, um, to to go through this process, and I guess it'll continue probably for another five or ten years, I would imagine, before we before we can uh, say you know we're in a position um, where we're comfortable and we need you know we can get back to maybe routine maintenance and routine repairs versus you know just repair from this catastrophic event. Mm -hmm. so. Well, judging by what you were able to accomplish uh, in, in battling this storm, when it comes to the sewage and water board, nothing's impossible, right? I agree. I was, <laughs> I, um, after going through what we went through, uh, I just, you know, I, it, it just changed my outlook. You know, not, not that I had a negative outlook previously, but just seeing what we were able to accomplish as a team and, and I, and the people that I worked with, uh, it just changed my views. I just became so much, so proud to to be a part of that team. That you know, like you said, we together we could accomplish miracles, and and um, and and it's just, it just was an amazing experience. I don't want to go through it again, but it was an amazing experience. <laughs> uh, it was almost, you know, I told some people it was almost like almost like going to war, you know. Nobody was shooting at us directly, but you know, it was it, it was it was just a life changing experience. You know? Well Vincent, thank you for sharing your story. Appreciate You're you. You're welcome. And uh, good luck to you. Thank you. Not that you need it. <laughs> The flooding of New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina was the most devastating disaster to hit any U.S. city. When most of the city was evacuating, some 300 sewage and water board employees stayed on the job, facing great personal peril to respond to this devastating crisis. We salute our Katrina heroes who met the greatest challenge of their lives and found a way to rise above the storm and overcome the impact of Hurricane Katrina. The board's forces dewatered the city in 11 days after the breaches were closed and began to restore quality of life, services of water, sewer, and drainage to the city. It was the restoration of these services that made it possible for citizens to return. It was the restoration of these services that made it possible for progress to begin, going from devastation to recovery, restoration, and today, rebuilding of the most complex infrastructure in the country. Today, confidence in the Sewerage and Water Board's management and fiscal responsibility has resulted in the first water and sewer rate increases since the 1990s. These increases will be the building blocks for the development and the continuous rebuilding of the board systems in the future.